<laughs> I work an orchestra of penguins! <laughs> As you can see, we'll be on the ground soon. Everything's all right now, but uh, that was a close call. Actually, the chances are a million to one against meeting another emergency like that. So please fly with us another time. There's a lot more to see on Mars. W, w Radio. Your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World Information Station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 231 for the week of July 17th, 2011. Walt Disney World is a multi-sensory environment on which we as guests aren't merely passive viewers, but active participants on a three-dimensional stage. And as part of the environmental experience, Disney has created details that help set that stage and not all of them are meant to be seen. Instead, many are meant to be heard, and throughout the parks, there are numerous hidden treasures in the form of audio tidbits. This week, we'll look at and help you discover many of those overlooked audio treasures that create such an immersive, detailed atmosphere. I'll then have a few announcements before playing some more of your voicemails at the end of the show, so sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WDW Radio Show. Be sure and visit the website at wdwradio.com for all of our back episodes, show notes, blog, discussion forums, videos, and lots more including the WDW Radio Store, where you can purchase my Walt Disney World trivia books and audio guides to Walt Disney World. Be sure and subscribe to the show in iTunes. And while you're there, download the free WDW Radio app and the all-new Walt Disney World trivia app with more than 750 multiple-choice questions, descriptive answers, and hundreds of did-you-know facts and figures. Also, be sure and join us live every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern for the WDW Newscast, live video broadcast and interactive chat. And you can also get together with other Disney fans at our Meets of the Month in Walt Disney World and other Disney events throughout the year. You can find out more over at DisneyMeets.com. And for more information, updates, and to follow along with everything that's going on, you can follow me over on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangiello. And join the WDW Radio page at Facebook.com slash WDW Radio. Part of the enjoyment of Walt Disney World is the appreciation of Walt Disney World. And what I mean is taking the time to explore, savor, and notice all the stories, details, and layers of the onion that make the experience so rich. And it's not always about how many rides, shows, and meals, okay, maybe meals, that you can experience but it's the little things that separate the Disney parks from any other place on earth. So I always encourage you to not only look up, down, and around, but to use all of your senses as well. And this week, I wanna point out some of those hidden treasures of Walt Disney World. And I don't mean what you can see, but what, if you listen very closely, you can hear. So we're gonna help you discover some of our favorite audio tidbits in the parks. And when I say we, I mean my friend and blogger over at DisneyDaddy.blogspot.com, Chuck Lionberger. Chuck, welcome back. Lou, always a pleasure. Always great having you here. And, you know, Chuck, you, like me, 
enjoy many of these, as I said, these layers of the onion. And at its most basic level, I think the parks are enjoyed by kids and families for what they are on their face. You know, the, the, the family that comes once every few years is there to enjoy the rides and the shows and the attractions. And I use something like the Haunted Mansion queue as an example. On its face, you know, it, there, there are cool things to see in this new expanded queue that add to the ambiance. Uh, there's interactive things to touch and play with and listen to, and we'll get to that, and maybe even get sprayed by. But as you start to peel back those layers of that onion, the frequent and or inquisitive guest is going to find a deeper storyline, a murder mystery to solve, references to Disney Imagineers, and a lot of other truly interactive elements. And that is what I think, Chuck, when we talk about these, these audio snippets are. They are deeper layers of this immersive, three-dimensional storytelling elements that, that Disney layers into all aspects of the parks. Oh, yeah. It, this is very similar to some other conversations we've had with previous shows. It is all about slow down and stop. All too often, you've been there, I've been there, many people listening to this have been to Rope Drop or to the Welcome Show at the Magic Kingdom or any of the other parks. And three, two, one, welcome and have a great day. And you see people flat out speed walking because we don't run, but speed walking to Space Mountain or Soren or Expedition Everest or to uh, Toy the Story bakery, Mania. The bakery, maybe. Uh, just you. <laughs> but I'm keeping and I want to go, stop, stop, wait, stop. Right. You're missing everything. And these, these different audio tidbits are just one more bit of those Disney details that all too often way too many guests just breeze right by and, and don't pay attention. And to be honest, they're really missing all the good stuff. Yeah, and look, you know, you certainly can't expect the guests or the family that does come once every three, four, five years, and they've got a couple of little kids, and they have a limited amount of time to take all that time to stop and look. But a lot of these things, like a lot of the other details, they are often in plain sight here, sound, uh, so they can be experienced and appreciated, especially by the return visitor, and that's what it is. It's sort of that additional layer of the storytelling element. And I think Main Street USA is a great example because there is so much detail and so much story there. And that's kind of, you know, when I did the first, you know, audio tour CD, people were like, well, how are you going to talk about Main Street for, for an hour and 20 minutes? I'm like, how am I not? Because there's so much to it. And I was like, well, there's no attractions there. What are you possibly talking about? And, and sure, many of us who, who are listening know that there is an overriding storyline and there's a lot of great details there. And that's what these are. These are sort of those audio details that, again, I, I want people to use all of their senses. You know, it is not just about what you see and what you can touch, uh, what you can smell. Uh, you, the bakery is a great example, but what you can hear as well. And I think Main Street USA in the Magic Kingdom, we'll hit the Magic Kingdom first, is a great place to start. It's a fantastic place to start. And in fact, that whole experience even starts in many respects from the time you get off the monorail or come off of the uh, the ferry boat. That in the distance you can hear the whistle of the Walt Disney World Railroad. Now, while yes, that's part of an attraction, it is that welcome to Walt Disney or welcome to the Magic Kingdom whistle that really begins to set the set the scene. Uh, for your experience to go down, to go back into history and walk down Main Street, USA. Right. And I think what we want to try and point out here are not the things that are obvious. You know, and when we say things that are obvious, we mean like the background music and the 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 Dapper Dans or the clapping of a horse's hooves on Main Street, USA. We mean things that people, for the most part, are likely going to overlook. And the first one that comes to mind when we first started talking about this segment, we all went... We, you and I went to the exact same thing, which is on yes. uh, Center Street, on East Center Street, or the only Center mm -hmm. Street that's still there, uh, right. where a lot of people don't walk down. And as you walk down Main Street, USA, that sort of first alleyway that you can go off to on your right um, by um, uh, the, the, the market Crystal place, Arts store. Right, Crystal Arts. If you head down that way, uh, there's seating areas and there's entrances into the stores. But when you're looking at the windows uh, up on one of the second levels, there's also something for you to hear there as well. And this, Chuck, is one of my favorite things that I love pointing out to people. I love to do this, too. And, and 
Center Street is a great place to just sit and you know, even for that first time family who is running around, you gotta take a break at some point. Why not come over to Center Street? There's some nice benches and some some chairs there uh, and tables to sit down and take a listen to everything that's going around you, not just you know the parade that may be playing or or, or the the milling about of people, but also listen carefully because you might just get a few very interesting tidbits and get a little bit of story about what's going on right above your head. Right, because remember too, when you step onto Main Street USA, you are not really stepping into a theme park. You are being a, you are you are going back into a an Atlantic Eastern Seaboard town at the turn of the century, and you are part of that environment. And all the things that you see and hear are setting that stage. And even the street atmosphere characters, Mayor George Weaver and the women and and Chief Smokey Miller, are townsfolk. This is a, a supposed to be a real working town. So as you move your way down Main Street, you are really uh, walking down a street at the turn of the century. And when you head down uh, East Center Street and look up on the second story window, you'll see a window that is offering uh, dance and voice lessons going on inside. And it's you need to sort of stand there and listen for a little bit because it's not playing all the time. But if you listen carefully, you may hear somebody getting tap lessons or singing scales as they're getting the voice lessons inside. Again, setting the stage that you really are in a town where people are living and working and playing uh, up on these second stories. Yeah, it really is just a, a neat little tidbit. In fact, the first time I heard this, it was one of those stop, cock your head, what was that look up? And you're hearing just these scales uh, you know, of, of a student singing the scales. In fact, Lou, why don't you demonstrate it for us? <clears throat> I have a throat thing going on today but you sorry you, you folks get, that's right <laughs> but you definitely get the point and i love seeing the reaction of people say you know i've been here a hundred times and i never stopped to look up and listen for what's going on in the background it, it just is a, a bit of that detail and what makes it a lot of fun is that you know as you're listening to that it really does begin to immerse yourself into turn of the century and meaning turn of the century as in the 1800s to the 1900s here and you really start to feel just part of life and and what uh was going on at that time of uh of our history yeah and and the thing about walt disney world is for the most part it is meant to be an interactive experience and, and a lot of things that you see chuck don't say pick me up move me play with me touch me but if you do, you might get a surprise. And uh, what used to be the Main Street Market House, which is where that building actually is, where that second floor story window is, there used to be a uh, an old style telephone in there. You'll still find one over at um, on Main Street at Engine Company 71. There's there. But the one that was on the Market House that's now been moved over to the Chapeau on the Tony's Town Square side is an old style crank telephone. And if you lift up the receiver and put it up to your ear, you can listen to a conversation going on when they used to have to call into the operator who would have to connect you to the party or there'd be a party line going on. And it is all part of that story. And, and there were, the longer you listened, the more that you caught it to hear. You'd hear some uh, some of the ladies gossiping. You'd hear somebody trying to reach the fire station because the, the barn was on fire. And it really, it's... It's a throwaway thing because 99% of the guests never see it or pick up the receiver to listen to it. But those that do, they get a bonus. They get a, they get a prize for being inquisitive. And that's the, the little touch that I'm talking about that only Disney seems to do so, so well. The first time I, I, uh, I saw the phone, I had known about it but had to, to kind of look around to go find it because it's – it is kind of tucked away, uh, and then you know found it, picked it up, and then and gave it to uh, one of my kids. Said, "Oh, by the way, it's for you." And they kind of, "What are you talking about? What is this?" It was a it was a moment of uh, teaching, really. Again, a little bit about history of this is a telephone, and this is what a telephone used to be like. Kids, there were no such things as push buttons or talk over the internet. You know, there was you crank the phone up, talk to somebody, and say, "Connect me with this other person in in some other place." And then I just told them. Take a listen and, and see what's going on, and you could sit them. Kind of, they, they would stop and and kind of listen to what's going on, and you could could start to hear you know, or even see some some grins and, and things like that as as you kind of hear what all what all is happening. Uh, again, this is another opportunity. Walt Disney World is not just about 
uh, entertainment, but it's also a little bit about education. This is a, another time to help, especially you know, uh, kids of ours, you know, the new generation, to understand what life was like a hundred years ago because it's very different than what it is today. And I could just see, you know, the the twelve, thirteen year old girl going, "Well, can you text on this? How do you Skype with this thing? How do you put this possibly in your pocket?" And then they go back to texting or Facebooking their friends and, and moving on. But exactly, uh, you're right. And there's and a lot of these things are again, they're 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 surprises, they're opportunities. Uh, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly about being learning opportunities as well. But a lot of them are just plain fun. And I mentioned in the intro about going over to the Haunted Mansion. And there's actually mm-hmm. a lot there. Um, in there's the a queue, ton at the Haunted Mansion. Haunted yeah. Mansion is full of wonderful audio. And not only, they're not all outside too. You know, some of the things are outside, some of the things are inside. Uh, certainly in the extended queue, there's the pipe organ you can play with there. Mm-hmm. And there's the, uh, the, the, um, the, the little book. touch ornaments, yeah, and, that and the you stuff can do that you... on both sides, right? The, exactly. Uh, and 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 you know, talking about that for a second, don't just as you're as you're walking through. And by the way, for those listening, as you're going into the haunted mansion, please go to the left, go through the interactive queue. It is so worth it. Don't skip it. This really is as as Disney is starting to do this whole idea of the scene one for the attraction where the queue starts to set the story. Please go through this uh, interactive queue because it's truly wonderful. And in one section, there are areas with um, little mini kind of uh, engraved sculptures of uh, instruments. And if you you touch that particular instrument, it will play Grim Grinning Ghosts. On one side, it sounds pretty good if you touch the trumpet and you're hearing Grim Grinning Ghosts. Flip around to the other side. Do the same thing and notice a vastly different different, very haunty, creepy uh, version with that same instrument. Absolutely. And there's a lot of things like that, too. There's the the book that asks you the riddles that you can mm-hmm. sort of interact with, and, and I love how it responds and it understands what your answer is going to be. But two of my favorite things uh, that you have to sort of wait for, one occurs outside, and that's at night. If you listen carefully, I love Liberty Square and Frontierland at night. But if you listen carefully, the howling dog off in the distance. But when you go into the stretching room, uh, if you can linger for as long as the cast member will let you, because since they've done the yes. refurb a couple of years ago, you can hear this little bit of laughter. You can hear a voice. And I don't want to ruin it for you because I want you to hear it for yourself and I could do a really bad impression of it anyway. But you can hear voices talking to you afterwards. And that's the bonus. Like that's the payoff that you get for hangout that's the deeper layer of the onion as as opposed to running through the door to get onto the line to get into your doom buggy first just stick around and do it trust us and it sounds just like chuck lionberger which is really <laughs> odd <laughs> where's my check from disney no don't i wish no but i'll tell you what you talk about the howling dog outside i go back to oh gosh 1970 something uh, one of my very first trip to Walt Disney World, and I'm a wee little tyke, and I can remember standing outside the Haunted Mansion. My dad is trying to get me to go in, and I'm hearing the howling dog with that classical Woo! like that, and I'm just shaking my head going, uh-uh, I'm not doing this. I, I was terrified, and it was the howling dog that made that Haunted Mansion and that whole image of everything that you see there at night so scary. You know, and again, I'm was quite little at the time. I was not a Disney daddy. I was a Disney kitty by then. And it was really, really scary. But you know, now I, I love the Howling Dog because, again, it's the audio that sets the environment. It's the, it, it sets up that whole ambiance. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, some of the ones that um, most guests don't hear for one reason or another are some of my favorites. And another one occurs actually over in Adventureland. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... The queue of Pirates of the Caribbean is so well detailed and it tells so much of a story and it's different whether you go to the left side or the right side and what you're going to see and the story that is going to tell. But if you do go on the right hand side of the queue, as you start walking down the final ramp uh, to the landing where you get into your boat off to the right hand side. Before you get to the water, uh, you will see sort of a cave with an eerie orange glow, and you'll see a uh, a shovel stuck into the dirt. Listen very, very carefully, 
and see if you can hear the digging going on far off in the distance. It's very faint, it's very subtle. Again, there was no reason to put it there, but adding that to it adds such a great little element to that. Again, setting the stage for what you are about to encounter before you even get on the attraction. Really, there's a reason that these are all called attractions and experiences. And it's that little bit of audio that you get just as you're getting ready to to board your boat, to head off uh, to see where dead men tell no tales, that you just this this little bit of digging so much sets the scene that you are you are immersed into the whole environment. Very different than uh, another type of area where it's hi, we're going to do a dark ride and then you're going to go down Flume and have fun. Not here. Here, everything is about the experience and the audio that you hear, especially that little bit of digging. In fact. If you can, just even take a moment and, and don't necessarily just rush right on the boat. Take a second and, and really just take in the whole queue there uh, over in the, Haunted Man, or in the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean because it really is another scene center. And it's a, a queue that I think too many people just rush right past. All right, Chuck, before we leave the Magic Kingdom, I want to quickly go over to one of my favorite lands, which is Frontierland, because there's a lot of great stuff here in places that you might not expect it. I don't mean in attractions per se. Uh, One of my favorites to point out to to people is when you are boarding the train station over at the uh, the, the Walt Disney World Railroad over at the Frontierland train station. Listen carefully for the Morse code that you can hear coming from behind the door. See if you can figure out what that is. It's a neat little bit of trivia. And then over on Tom Sawyer Island, of all places, there's two uh, that we really like. One of them is one of your favorites and actually takes place um, in the deep, dark recesses of the caves. Yeah, absolutely. Again, Tom Sawyer Island itself, uh, an incredible overlooked attraction. But over in Injun Joe's Cave, uh, there's quite a bit of treasure in there. Sadly, I still haven't figured out a way to take it with me. But if you're in that treasure room and, and you can see all the gems and all of that and all the gold, listen up and, and hear around you. You'll hear this kind of uh, odd humming that's going on. It's almost like there's something mystical or magical going on uh, inside that cave. And it really sets that creepiness um, to that particular area. So it's it's a fun place to bring uh, bring people into is, and you kind of just listen and, and see what's going on. And it, it really just adds a lot of eeriness to that particular cave. Absolutely. And one of my favorites is actually over on Harper's Mill. You can see it from the Frontierland side uh, across the rivers of America. Harper's Mill named for, to honor Disney Imagineer Harper Goff. But if you go inside, you'll see that it really is, it has a working water wheel and it is a, a working mill and the gears do turn inside. If you look and listen carefully, you can hear that the creeks that the mill makes actually plays down by the old mill stream. And in between one of the uh, broken gears, you'll find a little bird's nest and a bluebird. These both pay homage to an old Disney film called The Old Mill. So again, there's that educational aspect, Chuck, because you are learning a little Mm -hmm. bit early Disney animation, but a fun little thing as well that you need to stop and listen carefully in, in order to catch all of those details we just touched on. Again, another example. Take your time. Absolutely. Let's move over to Epcot uh, because there's some cool stuff that you can find both in Future World and in World Showcase. Some uh, maybe a little bit more obvious um, and the reasons behind them are a little more obvious than others. Yeah, well, let's start over at the the Seas Pavilion and I I can sum it all in three simple words. Mine, mine, (laughs) mine. You know, the, the, with the, the redo of the Seas Pavilion uh, a few years ago that officially was opened up back in uh, 2007, uh, moving it from the Living Seas to the Seas with Nemo and Friends, we added several of the uh, seagulls from Finding Nemo. And, of course, is your, if those who are familiar with the movie, that's all they say all the time. And just adding that little bit of uh, detail in there is mine, 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 and you Every once in a while. They don't do it all the time, uh, every couple of minutes or so. But it's just a neat little bit. In fact, sometimes you know it's fun for those who aren't aware of it to just kind of have them hang out there. And the next thing you know, mine, mine, mine. And they kind of a little bit of a jump and turn around and didn't really realize that those things actually moved and were you know, uh, uh, animatronics. And I think it's great and it's fun and certainly very obvious and it becomes a photo opportunity 
as well for people. But one mm-hmm. of the ones that's my favorite is actually one that's much more subtle. It's actually meant to be hidden to a certain degree from guests, and it's because of the reason behind it. Yeah, speaking find, of birds. Yeah, you can find this actually in two locations. You can find it in Future World. Uh, if you stand near the tip board, near the electric umbrella, you can also hear this sound in Norway, and you can really hear it very well here over by the grass roof uh, on the outside of the bakery right next to the church. What you hear is the sound of a bird, and it's a very specific sound, and it's meant to be the sound of a bird in distress because this is Disney's natural way of keeping birds that definitely want to swoop down on your lefse and french fries in Norway and Electric Umbrella, you know, specifically, uh, by playing the sound of a bird in distress, it naturally keeps most of the birds away from that area without having to use other methods. And I think it's, it's brilliant and it's very subtle. It's very subconscious and you won't probably hear it unless you go there listening for it. That's this is one of those little bits of Disney trivia that I love to to tell people if I'm you know I, I meet some folks uh, around the parks and we'll kind of buy the electric umbrella I'll just stop and say listen to that that's not a real bird up there that's actually Disney trying to keep birds away a neat little bit of of uh, trivia and again a, a a way that Disney continues to uh, to live up to their whole environmentality uh, mantra and having to uh, to really be kind to the environment. Absolutely. I love that. And you pointed out one that I completely forgot about. Yes. But but I love listening to as well. Head over to Journey into Imagination. No, we're not talking about scents this time. I'm not talking about the skunk smell, but I'm talking about some, some hidden sounds that are there that, again, way too many people just, you know, because most of the time Journey into Imagination has a five or no minute wait. Uh, they just walk right in and zoom over to the load area. But Along the walkway between the entrance and the load area, you'll see several closed doors, and these are tributes to different uh, Disney inventors uh, in in the movies, like uh, Wayne Zielinski or uh, uh, you know the professor for who invented Flubber and all of that. Stop and listen to what's going on in their offices. The phone will ring, and you'll hear their various secretaries ex- explaining why they're not in. And they're kind of cute little uh, puns to uh, whatever their particular uh, movie is about, uh, whether it be you know uh, like the Nutty Professor, and he he can't come in for a particular reason. Just when you're walking along that hallway, uh, kind of take a leisurely stroll and listen to the, the different uh, answer lines that are going on. It'll give you a, give you a smile. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, great details and some funny stuff in there as well. One other one that I wanted, actually two other ones, I just thought of one that I had forgotten about, uh, is over in World Showcase. And over in Germany, there's a couple. Uh, Recently, they added the uh, Rapunzel Tower from Tangled. And if you listen, Mm -hmm. every so often, you'll get a little subtle bit of the music from Tangled there. Also, by the Snow White meet and greet area, you'll hear the birds over by the Wishing Well. But the one I really want to point out is probably one, Chuck, that I think a lot of people pass by because I think maybe people don't go here uh, long enough to hear it is over in Morocco. And as you go under uh, the Bob Bob Boujalud Gate, which is sort of a a replica of the gateway to the city of Fez, on the left-hand side is the Fez house. And it's a a replica of a traditional Moroccan home. And if you listen carefully, and sometimes you, you have to wait for it, you might hear the family sort of making a lot of noise and talking possibly arguing upstairs on the second story. Again, immersing you into the fact that when you cross through that gate, you are stepping foot onto the streets of Morocco. And and like this was one that actually, when you had mentioned, I'd kind of forgotten about it. And I can remember going in there and actually kind of being confused by it for a second and looking around and going, what's up? Was there a problem somewhere? Who's arguing? And then realizing, of course, where the the sound was coming from, that it was another uh, little audio treasure. But Again, very fascinating because it sets that environment. Definitely. Uh, Let's move over to Disney's Hollywood Studios because there's a few here that are fun and obvious and a couple more that are a little little bit more subtle, but again, help sort of set that stage and some that you have to really kind of look for uh, and interact with things with in order to make happen. Yeah, the very favorite of my kids. Every time we are at 
Hollywood Studios. All three of them have to do this. Over by the queue to Indiana Jones, there is a, a well, and you can see uh, a rope where somebody supposedly is uh, is down the well, and it says, do not pull rope, but the word not has been X'd out, so therefore it says, do pull rope. Go ahead and pull it. Give it a good yank, and from inside that, that well or pit, you will hear somebody give some sort of audio, whether it's, oh, hey, what are you doing? Stop it. Or some other type of line. And the line varies uh, from time to time. But again, another little interactive thing, 99.9% of people will walk by and have no idea that you could actually do that. So next time you're walking around, give that rope a yank and see if you happen to hear something. doesn't happen every single time you pull it. But uh, when you do, you just might get something neat. And I love bringing my kids and other people's kids by this and having them. Of course, this Chuck, this is the one time in ever that my kids are like, no, daddy, it says don't pull the rope. I'm like, listen, I know Disney's sending you mixed messages here, but I'm telling you it's okay. This is the one time that they actually want to listen to instructions as opposed to kids, do not go clean your room means do not go clean your room. So remember (laughs) the not the word not has been X'd out. So therefore it says do pull rope. I'm trying to, to reason with a five-year-old, and, and this is what, what I get. Hey, I have to do it to reason with a 12-year-old, so I'm afraid you're in for it for a while. Um, you know, a couple of the other ones that I, I have that I thought of when we talked about, again, hidden treasures and things that maybe are or sometimes not in plain sight. Uh, one that came to mind, and this sort of gets an asterisk next to it because it is – part of an attraction, but it's really at the end of it. Uh, look, I know that sounds dangerous. Is probably not on the top of everybody's must-do, rope drop, go-to uh, experience over at Hollywood Studios. But at the end of the attraction, they do have the Soundworks, which is a hands-on area where you can play with sound effects and create your own soundtrack. But inside there, I think 99.999% of guests have probably never walked into these darkened sound booths in which you can listen to all kinds of sound, uh, kind of like what you get in Sounds Dangerous. Maybe to a certain degree now, it's not as impressive because we have binaural audio coming through on your iPod or your TV, whatever it is. But there are some neat interactive things that you can catch there. There's a there's a, an additional storyline that comes through there uh, and it's still pretty neat. I know Soundworks is not open all the time, so it's even harder to get to uh, as well than maybe it was even before. A little more challenging, but it, it's very similar also to something else that we'll be talking a little bit later uh, over at Animal Kingdom that is still uh, available uh, to experience. One more, though, that I did want to bring up, though, uh, as you were talking about it, reminded me about something that's just next door, and that's over at Star Tours. Now, while hopefully you've gotten a chance to all experience Star Tours 2, which is a wonderful attraction with all great kind of sounds there, outside, though, is still the giant at and every once in a while, it will take a shot and it will start firing. And you will hear that great sound of the laser cannon firing. So, again, it doesn't happen all the time, uh, but a great little audio effect that sets the scene and tells you uh, that you're in the land of Star Wars. And at night, you can hear my cousins up in the Ewok village playing around up yes. there as well. Too. <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, you can. I was actually going to mention, you know, that uh, uh, Lou, who you know, uncredited in the the film Return of the Jedi, uh, is up there with all of his friends. They are hanging out uh, in the Ewok village, and you know, you'll you can if you spoke uh, uh, Ewok, you might be able to hear what they're talking about. But dub 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 dub. That's all I got to tell you. Anyway, moving over to uh, a couple other quick little things over on the streets of America, formerly known as New York Street. Uh, there's mm, oh, a lot oh, of right subtle, sounds. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great sounds in the distance that almost make you sort of look around because you think that a car is coming or you hear sort of those mm-hmm. city sounds. Go stand by the subway station and see if you can hear the sound of the subway going by. And if you pay close attention, here's your free trivia bit of the day. If you look at the subway lines, you know, New York has the L line and the T line and the B line. It's the WD line for Walt Disney. Well, of course. Where else would you uh, have a line? By the way, I don't think they finished construction on that line to get it from WDW to New York and back, but I'm sure they're working on that one day. It's the underground monorail system from Hollywood that's Studios it. to the TTC. So. That's it, exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, just really, uh, as you're strolling along uh, the streets of America, it really 
sets the scene. I mean, you're listening to this and you hear cars honk and, and everything like that and just kind of the gabble of people. Um, wonderful sound effects uh, that are going on throughout that entire street that, that transports you uh, to New York and or walking the, the streets of San Francisco. Yeah, and one other that I'm, sh- I'm not sure is there or, or is on anymore. Um, I still make the height requirement, but I, I bypassed the age limitation a long time ago. Over at the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids play area, in between oh, yes. the garden hose and the uh, the roll of film, there's like a slide there, there's a dog's nose there. And it used to be that if you put your hand in there, you would get the, the dog would kind of and, and sniff you. Uh, I don't Possibly, know if that's on all the time. Uh, I've been back there a couple of times with the kids, and I think maybe they mentioned that. But now that you mention it, though, if you're in that area, every once in a while, you will hear the sound of like flies buzzing over top and things like that. Um, so that you again, you're in the world. You've now been shrunk down to, you know, the size of an ant, and you know, every once in a while, you will hear something buzzing up above you. Um, and it's it's not quiet by any means. I mean, it really is is fairly loud uh, and and very distinctive. Uh, but it's really really cool because you'll look up and kind of wonder what's up above you. Do is there something going on up there? Yeah, and, and some of us have to get shrunk <clears throat> less than others. Anyway, move over to I wasn't going to say anything, but Disney's <clears throat> yeah. Animal Kingdom, and again, uh, especially over in Africa, when you cross over that bridge, that that bridge over the Discovery River, which acts as the portal that transports you into the village of Harambe. And and especially if you do something like Disney's Animal Trek, that add-on experience, they really buy into that story of Harambe being a working town. And everything there sets the stage for that, from the cast members to uh, the posted uh, posters all over the walls to even the stuff that you hear. And I suggest, uh, after having a an awesome breakfast over at Tusker House in Africa, if you yes, sit outside much. the dining area, you can hear kitchen noises. And it's not coming from the Disney, you know, real kitchen. It's coming from the story kitchen. That you, so you hear these dishes clanking together, and you hear broken glass getting swept up. Uh, you can hear the landlady banging on the door to try and get into the room in that little uh, upstairs hotel area outside. You really, really have to pay close attention, Chuck, and and wait for it and listen to it. But again, especially because of where you hear it, it sometimes gets lost on most guests, but it's it's a great little detail if you wait to hear it. Yeah, it this one is a, it really is kind of a be patient, and you have to kind of strain your ears for it a little bit, especially uh, during the, the, the uh, busiest parts of the day where folks are milling about, waiting for fast passes for the, the safaris to open up. So you know, there could be a lot of just gabble going on there. And sometimes that's, it gets lost to hear these extra little audio tidbits. But you know, if you're there uh, sort of early in the morning or waiting for one of those early ADRs at Tusker House, take a moment, just kind of stand over. And you can hear uh, what's going on and, and really puts you into, uh, into Harambe. Absolutely. And, and so we talked about a, um, one of these hidden treasures, these audio tidbits, in another park, and you referenced that there was one similar to that over in Animal Kingdom as well. Yes, over at Rafiki's Planet Watch uh, itself, unfortunately, like Tom Sawyer Island, an overlooked attraction. Over it, in the Planet Watch itself, uh, there are kind of tucked away in a corner. There are a series of oh, I don't know, about uh, four or five maybe doors. These are little sound booths, and the point behind them is to go inside, sit down, put on some headsets. The lights will dim, and you're listening to the environment of uh, a particular part of the earth and you're listening to different animal calls and things like that. And while this isn't really environmental sound like what we've been describing before, this really is sound as an attraction. In fact, sound exclusively as an attraction and is way overlooked. It's This is a, a fun thing to do and I try and do this every time I'm over at Rafiki's Planet Watch because it's a great opportunity to uh, sit down and cool off, especially this time of year where it's a little hot in Florida, but also to kind of close your eyes and calm down for a little while and just rest and listen to something that can be uh, pretty peaceful for the most part, unless you happen to be listening to a predator sound of some sort. Uh, So next time you're over at Rafiki's, take a moment, pop into the sound booth and, and really listen to another part and listen to life on Earth. 
Yeah, I, I like it, and I agree with you that it is very, very much overlooked. As is, look, Rafiki's Planet Watch, you know, you've got to invest the time to go out there. You've got to ride the, the Wildlife Express train and go out there and, and take the walk over. But I think it, it very much is, is worth it. And to spend, you know, a half hour or an hour uh, out there taking part in all the interactive exhibits that they have. But the other one that I really enjoy is also back in Africa. It is more of a storytelling element, and it's not a requisite part of the attraction. But over on the Kilimanjaro Safari, as you walk through the queue, and this is one of the attractions that, uh, you know, I think Fast Pass is great, but there are certain attractions, Chuck, that I think you need to do the standby queue to experience mm-hmm. the full queue and the full story. And it's a, look, it's a small, subtle, throwaway thing. But over in the wildlife booking office that you walk through as you're winding through the queue, you'll see that there's the empty desk there uh, of the booking office where you can book your safari tours. If you listen long enough, uh, you'll hear the telephone ring and the answering machine kids, if you remember what those are, actually picks up and you'll hear the message playing, promoting the safari and, uh, you know, relaying the message to the person that's calling in and telling about the company's motto being when it comes to safaris, we go wild. And, and it's just a really neat sort of add on thing. It's it's one of those unexpected things that is sort of that that little present, that little extra gift that guests who happen to be in there when that happens get. I can remember uh one of the first times I rode to Expedition Everest, and it was about a 60-minute wait. Didn't have a fast before it. It was kind of warm. Wasn't really sure if I wanted to do this, but I knew that the queue uh, was uh, – not sorry, Everest, I'm sorry, uh, the safaris. I, I knew that the queue was uh, something worth experiencing, and so uh, I decided to go ahead and, and, and take the wait. And it really is – it's just that extra – as you said, it's that extra little bit. It's kind of – like uh, you know, over at Expedition Everest or over at Toy Story Mania, it's it's these are another one of these queues that you really just fast pass almost becomes a curse because you you miss a lot, and those little sound bits uh, that are going on. If I'm not mistaken, it, it very similar to the Jungle Cruise. Even there's kind of some overhead uh, announcements and things like that that are going on as well. If I'm not mistaken, exactly, and, and it is. It's it's one of those things that. Sometimes you're so preoccupied with looking around or, or talking to your family or friends that you miss some of the visual things. You certainly miss a lot of the audio things. And you're right. I think the uh, Jungle Cruise is a great example of the narration playing of this old time radio uh, going overhead. There's references. There, there's fun jokes in there. There's references to uh, Imagineers, like early Imagineers, like Winston Hibbler and Ted Sears. And again, sort of sets that storyline for you as well. You know, Chuck, there, there's one other one that I just thought of when we we're talking about the the interactive versus sort of the, the passive experiences of, of getting to hear these. And there was one I forgot over in Tomorrowland, and that is by the lunching pad. There's the phone booth there. There's that intergalactic phone booth that if you go over, yes. just start dialing random numbers, and there's, I think, seven to nine different answering machine messages, speaking of answering machines, that made me think about it, uh, that you'll hear that are from and for people who are residents uh, of this new Tomorrowland and for some of the characters like Sunny Eclipse that actually live and work there. Yes, that I, I totally forgot about that too until you just mentioned it. Uh, another little, just a cool interactive bit, it's very similar to The Rope, uh, over at Hollywood Studios, these are things that a lot of guests will think, oh, I'm not supposed to touch this. Go ahead. There's a, there's a benefit to doing that. And you know, pick up that phone and listen and see what's going on. Uh, you know, Speaking of phones, though, I thought about another one, as you were mentioning that. It's not even at a park, and it's one that you have to, to actually set up. And if you're a resort guest, you can get a wake-up call from a character. Now, you know, that's, that's a little bit different than maybe than what we're talking about here of, of overlooked attractions or overlooked sounds. But in many respects, it is because all, a lot of guests might not even think or might not even be aware that this particular uh, option is even available and something that they could take advantage of. Yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, and when I mentioned the one in Tomorrowland, it got me thinking about one that uh, I'm hoping is just taken away temporarily. But it got me thinking about ones that are extinct. The ones that are no longer around that I really enjoyed. And the one that Tomorrowland that I started thinking about was the robot newsboy at the entrance to 
the Wedway People Mover Tomorrowland Transit Authority, the mm -hmm. red and blue and silver newsboy that if you walked over when he was working and when he was there, he has been, at the time that we're recording this, he has been taken away. I'm hoping he's going to come back. If you stood in front of it, it activated a motion sensor and you would actually hear him talking to you uh, about the news or about the delivery of the news. And that, Chuck, too, got me thinking about another or a couple of other ones, really, that used to be there for the one that I'm thinking of next. It sadly isn't there anymore. And that's over on Main Street, USA. Do you remember Goofy? Remember the statue of Goofy? That if oh, yes. And took the picture with him, Goofy would talk to you. you would yes, hear Goofy, Goofy react would talk to you. To you. He was over uh, in front of uh, Town Square. And he was uh, kind of a stylized, it wasn't a completely lifelike color version of Goofy. It was kind of a little bit stylized, but he was sitting on a bench. And if you sat down, uh, you know, like you said, just to take a picture, next thing you know, you know you're hearing, gosh, good to have you here, or something along those lines. Um, in, in fact, I remember one of my kids was sitting down taking a picture, and it freaked him out because here all of a sudden Goofy's <laughs> talking to them. Um, you know, I thought later and kind of walked up to the partner statue and was hoping to hear Walt talk to me or something like that, but sadly, no. Yeah, it, um, and, and that's the thing. The one that I like about that is watching the reaction of guests who were thinking they were just sit sitting down to take a picture, and, and then they get that kind of response. A um, couple other quick ones I wanted to mention as far as ones that uh, are – and I don't – I'm almost sure this isn't there anymore. We mentioned the streets of America. It used to be New York streets. I can swear, Chuck, and somebody please correct me because I probably may be wrong. Uh, you used to be able to hear – People talking up in the streets and gunshots ringing out inside some of the buildings. I, I, this I don't know if I remember the gunshots, but I do kind of – you can hear some conversations yeah. going on. Uh, and I remember especially hearing this uh, during uh, Osborne Spectacle of Lights that when you're up there, you can really – there's a lot of really, really beautiful uh, – tidbits of audio that are going on up there in different conversations. Another that you happen to mention, and it's still there right now, is, is sensor-activated ones are the tiki to uh, poles over in front of uh, the Jungle Cruise, that if you stand on top of those, you might get a little audio, um, you know, tiki music playing, uh, things like that. Again, little audio uh, tidbit that you can get if you're standing in the right spot. Yeah, and something else I, I haven't experienced in a long time, I'm not sure it's still there, are the talking water fountains in Epcot still there as well. I knew the play fountains in between Future World and World Showcase. There was another um, mm -hmm. number of them near Interventions West. I, I haven't gone to them, so I don't know if those are still talking or not. I don't think they are. If they are, I have not, I haven't heard them uh, in quite a while. So I think that that is now extinct, unfortunately. Oh, you know what? I, speaking of talking and and inanimate objects, I we, we mentioned Electric Umbrella before. Have you ever heard or... Not hopefully not spoken back to the talking trash can. Oh, push! No, no. There's a different inside oh, electric umbrella. There's one garbage can by the door near the restrooms uh, as you're approaching from uh, Spaceship Earth on the left hand side at that entrance. When you put your garbage in, the garbage can talks to you, and it's the only no. one that's in there. And yeah, and I know he I, is still no, there I, as well. No, I haven't done that. I'll have to. I'll have to, to seek him out the next time. Uh, thought. You were kind of referring to another push version, but no, this is this is different. See, so there you go. So mission accomplished because it's it. Look, that's a perfect example of what we're trying to do: is make all of us realize and recognize and seek out these audio experiences. You know, we look for the details, we look for the hidden Mickey's, we look for the stories, whatever it might be, to enhance our enjoyment and appreciation of the parks. And now we want you to go do that with the audio tidbits as well, and certainly. You know, you saw, Chuck, we were sort of playing catch up at the end as we were thinking about ones that we had missed. If we had missed any more, please let us know. Come by this week's uh, podcast show notes over at WDWRadio.com. Click on this week's podcast. Come to the comment section. Leave your comment on the bottom. What did we miss? Or better yet, what's your favorite one? What's the one that you like to bring friends, family, other guests to, or even the random guest you might call them and say, hey, come here, come check this out, and then watch their reaction as they get, again, it, it, that's what it's all about, Chuck, that little added element, that little added surprise that helps sort of enhance their experience in the parks. These little bits that we've been talking about, and again, there's so many more that I'm sure somebody out there is probably screaming right now going, well, you completely forgot <laughs> this one. How could you, how could you miss this one? It's the most obvious in the world. There are so many of them. 
Uh, and again, as you heard kind of at the end, we were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, and what about, uh, but take your time, enjoy these little bits of detail. Don't just rush from here to there and the other. Take your time, slow down, and enjoy the magic. Because, folks, here's where the magic really is. Absolutely. Listen, Walt Disney World is full of many more and many different types of hidden treasures. Uh, That's what we try and do here on the show. Chuck is a contributor, and we are so grateful for his contributions to Celebrations Magazine, where we also help try and point some of these things out and of course Mm -hmm. please go by and check out chuck's blog he is the disney daddy and his blog is disneydaddy.blogspot.com chuck i know we have a lot more ideas for stuff that we want to share with people look forward to you coming back on the show soon absolutely and folks if you're over on the blog be sure to check out uh, tip tuesday every tuesday i'll give a a different uh, tip about different things going on at walt disney world and new on the blog is photo friday every trip i take to walt disney world i take Lots and lots and lots of pictures. Well, for a long time, they just sat on a hard drive. And I've recently said, you know what? I need to share some of the photography because some of it is really just different and interesting. And so now every Friday, I'm sharing some some of my photos uh, of Walt Disney World on Photo Friday. So please come and check it out. Awesome. Will do, Chuck. Thanks again for coming on the show, buddy. Always. My pleasure. Earth crust pizza, we deliver anywhere in the solar system in less than two light years or your order is free. Can you hold please? That's going to do it for this week's show. Thanks again for taking the time and tuning in this and every week. Please come by, comment on this week's show, answer some of the questions that we asked about your favorite hidden audio treasure in the parks. You can visit wdwradio.com, click on the show notes for show number 231, and comment right there. Don't forget while you're there to check out the blog for new content every day. We've got a lot of new contests going on as well, including the Our Homes Went Disney contest, the Box People Logo contest, where you can win a three-night stay at a Walt Disney World moderate resort thanks to Mouse Fan Travel. You can check out the blog or the newscast from July 6th for more information. Also, the latest in my series of audio walking tours of the parks is now available. Frontierland is available as an instant download or to pre-order on CD. You can also get it over in iTunes. If you like the tour, please rate and review it there. You can check the WW Radio store by clicking on the shop link on the homepage there for more information or to order. There you'll also find links to lots of other stuff going on, including our Cruise on the Disney Dream, November 4th through the 8th, 2012. We'll be back cruising on the Dream once again. You can find a link to Celebrations Magazine, LouMangelo.com to find out about my personal tours and speaking engagements and more. You can also find out all the ways to connect with me and the show through Twitter. I'm at Lou Mangiello. Facebook, Google+, our Disney Meets of the Month by visiting DisneyMeets.com and lots more. Big thanks, as always, to our partners and sponsors, including Mouse Fan Travel. They are my recommended travel provider for all your Disney vacation planning needs. You hear Becky on the show all the time. She and her team offer the best possible prices and discounts with an amazing level of personal service. And that is what separates them from everyone else. And again, their services are completely free to you. Check them out over at mousefantravel.com. When you're coming to Walt Disney World... Maybe you want your own private pool or a spa or game rooms, multiple master bedrooms. Well, All Star Vacation Homes has two-bedroom condos up to seven-bedroom homes within just a couple of miles of Walt Disney World. Go visit them online at allstarvacationhomes.com. And I am traveling to Walt Disney World in just a couple hours, and I will once again be staying at one of my favorite places on property. It's the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin. They've got the most comfortable beds on property, in my opinion. They also have 17 world-class restaurants and lounges right in the heart of Walt Disney World. You can take a boat to Epcot, the Boardwalk, Disney's Hollywood Studios, lots of other benefits as well. Check them out online at swananddolphin.com. 
There's lots more going on over at the site and lots more coming soon, including the D23 Expo just a couple of weeks away. Don't forget that if you are going to be there for the Expo, please come by the WDW Radio booth in the Collectors Forum. Say hi. We've got a lot of fun stuff and a few surprises going on. Also going to be giving a lot of stuff away there as well. But if you can't make it and if you're going to be home and want to sort of be connected to the experience and watch the event all three days, Come by d23expolive.com. We're going to be broadcasting from there. We'll be taking you guys around the expo. Uh, really should be a good time. We did it a couple of years ago in 2009. If you visit that site now, you can see some videos from the first expo and get a sense of a little bit more about what we're, we're going to do coming in just a few weeks I am super excited for the expo this year. I think it's going to be bigger and better than it was in 2009, both for the people who are in attendance and for being able to sort of share that experience with you guys and bring some good content back for you as well. Again, D23 Expo Live is where we're going to be broadcasting at and from, so be sure and watch and check out there starting on August 19th. So that's going to do it for this week's show. Please be sure and come by every Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, over at www.newscast.com. Watch and chat about this week's Walt Disney World live in the chat room with us. And if you can't make it there live, you can also check out the video on the blog or on YouTube or check out the audio also in the iTunes feed. Speaking of which, if you like the show, and I hope you do, all I ask is that you please help spread the word let others know about it. So tweet out that you're listening, share a link on Facebook or Google Plus. Come by, please review the show and the iPhone apps over in the iTunes store. And please remember always that it is never too late for you to start pursuing your passion and do what you love each and every day. And when you do, always keep moving forward. Thank you again so very much for listening. Have a great week, everybody. See ya. Hey Lou, Jen Tremley from Bristol, Connecticut. I just finished listening to this week's show, 2.30, about the D23 Expo. Um, I am a D23 member, um, have been, uh, unfortunately I did not get in on the charter year, but um, I did get in shortly thereafter and I have been a member ever since. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy uh, being a D23 member. Um, I am a little bummed that I have not been able to attend uh, the D23 Expo. Uh, I didn't go two years ago and I'm unable to attend this year as well. Uh, part of the problem is it's just hard to get out to California, especially when you live on the East Coast. I mean, I'm up in Connecticut, and, you know, to go out there for a couple of days, you know, it's just it's tough between the airfare and, and then the cost of the, you know, lodging and everything like that. So hopefully one of these days I will get a chance to get out there and experience it. It sounds like you guys had a blast at the last one, and you're going to have a blast um, this time as well. I'm very jealous. I'll try to look, you know, uh, look at your show and, and kind of keep tabs on it through the box and hopefully, um, you know, be able to enjoy it through that. Um, I am jealous that you guys are able to go, and um, hopefully one of those days I will get there. Um, but I thoroughly enjoyed listening to it, even though I haven't had experience with it. It was very informative and um, just kind of uh, entices me. Um, you know, hopefully I'll get there one day and, and I'll be able to experience it. Uh, full hand. So anyway, keep up the great work. I um, love your show, as you know, and I look forward to the future podcasts and meeting you one day. I'm um, looking forward to our Disney trip in September. Just an FYI, we'll be down there September 17th through the 24th. So I'm hoping you can maybe schedule September's meet of the month from sometime that week. I would love to meet you. Talk to you later. Have a great week. Hi, Lou. It's Nicole Cisferetti. I just listened to your episode about the D23 Expo. And just when I thought I couldn't be any more excited, of course I am. I thought you, Becky, Mark, and Mary Jo did such an awesome job. And I will see all of you out there. And I just wanted to let you know I'll be there wearing a sparkly WTW radio shirt. Bye. Hey, Lou. It's Glenn from Alabama. Just got finished listening to your Epcot retrospective on the Wonders of Life Pavilion with uh, Ryan Wilson. Got to give a shout-out to Ryan. Ryan and Tim, probably my two favorite guests on your show, so keep having them on. But I really enjoyed and appreciated the Wonders of Life retrospective. Uh, That is one of my earliest memories of Disney World. Body Wars is still talked about to this day by my mother, who loved it. Um, Of course, I was always the the biggest, the bigger Star Tours fan. Uh, Still am. Um, But I appreciate mention of the bicycles. That's um, not having a very good memory, the, the bicycles is one thing that I do remember from the Epcot Pavilion. So it brought back a lot of memories, and it also made me wish that I had experienced a lot more of that pavilion 
to at least remember um, a lot more of it than than what I than what I do remember. But it was probably uh, my father pushing us and making us go further and further and further and doing as much as we can and seeing as much as we could. And we probably didn't get to see a whole lot of that pavilion. But um, very special memories there, and I appreciate you bringing those back. Again, as always, love the show, love what you do, appreciate it. Hope to meet you someday soon. Okay, bye bye. Yeah.